Hi friends, welcome back to the fourth round of 2019 Animal Artist Collective videos. The aim of these videos and the art created is to provide a platform for emerging artists, to promote positive messages for animal welfare and to connect artists to their communities. Artwork produced is always made available for sale with at least 50% of the proceeds going to a non-profit animal conservation organisation. Unofficial participation is absolutely welcomed, videos, artwork, anything like that. So if you create something based around the theme, make sure you share it with us on social media. Links can all be found in the description below for you guys. Make sure you check out all of the other artists participating this round. All the links can be found in the description as well. And we have two guests for this round, one being Bonnie Snowden, a fellow coloured pencil artist. And again, we have Sarah from the Art Hive. So welcome once again, Sarah. The theme for this round is ungulates. And when I first heard this term, I had absolutely no idea what that was and how the term is sort of classified but it's basically anything that has hooves so think horses camels deer hippos all of those kinds of animals once i'd figured out the term i realized i had a couple of animals to choose from because a few months ago i visited one of my local wildlife parks and took a bunch of my own references of a whole host of different ungulates didn't know what that was when i first took the photos but now now I do. And I narrowed it down to the bongo and the red river hog. It's a common theme that I always have. I always narrow it down to two. <laughs> I don't know why. And ultimately, the one that won was the hog, as I've never drawn a pig or a hog before, and I wanted to tackle that kind of wiry texture. It also helped that when I visited the park, the hogs were absolutely freaking adorable and I was just so taken by them. So that's my choice for this round and that's the artwork that you're going to see unfold. Now, the hogs themselves aren't in immediate danger. They're actually listed as least concern, but I just wanted to venture into something that wasn't a complete obvious for the theme and something that perhaps doesn't get a lot of recognition because I hadn't heard of these guys until I saw them at the zoo. So let's give you a little bit of background info on these guys. Red river hogs or bush pigs as they are locally known are found in forest regions in central and western Africa and they live in groups of between 6 and 20 so they're a pretty social animal. They prefer swampy areas so think of like humid kind of wet sort of boggy areas a bit like a rainforest type area and they don't tend to stray far from their sort of foresty wet biome and the groups tend to consist of one boar which is a male and the rest of the group being piglets and females and what the boar will do is defend the group from other predators like um, leopards and those sort of big cats that you often find in Africa and they really fiercely protect the horde so you've got just the one male protecting all of the females and piglets I can just imagine it now the hogs are actually omnivores as well and they mainly feed on roots, grasses, fruits, dead animal and plant remains and also insects and lizards so they have a pretty varied diet. The hogs also have a large muzzle or a snout which they use to dig around the ground, sort of dig up all of the soil and that kind of thing and they find their delicious snacks. They also use their feet and their tusks to move soil and dig a little deeper to find just what they want. They actually have two sets of tusks as well, one on the upper jaw and one set on the lower jaw. The upper ones tend to be quite hidden but the lower tusks are super duper sharp and can grow up to 7 centimeters long. Red river hogs don't oink like a standard pig either, but in fact they kind of grunt and communicate using low sort of rumbling grunty noises, which have been said to resemble that of a bassoon player. Yeah, I've not heard a bassoon player before, I don't know about you guys, but I can imagine a really low sounding grunt, so let's just stick with that. I have no idea what a bassoon is either. The most striking features of the hog are the bright orange or sort of brownie coat, which is actually fur. Most um, other pigs or hogs have like a little bit of skin showing, but the hogs are covered in fur. There's no sort of any of that skin visible, which is unusual compared to others of its variety. The other feature, of course, as you're probably seeing in the drawing, is the 
ears, those long, tufty ears. Is anybody else getting Dobby vibes from Harry Potter? Because that's exactly what I thought when I saw these guys. That is such a unique feature. It's so adorable. So now we have a few facts under our belts about these beautiful pigs. I want to talk to you about my process and thoughts behind this piece. So as I mentioned, I just wanted to focus on something that was a little bit unusual. Previous Animal Artists Collective videos are sort of focused on a bit more of like the beautiful kind of animals. So um, last year I did kingfishers, polar bears, that kind of thing, sort of the more common aspects of the um, theme for the round. But this time I wanted to focus on something a little bit, a little bit different, so a little bit out of the ordinary. That's why I chose the Red River Hogs and also just because they are just so enthralling. They're just so gorgeous. I was just at the zoo, I was walking down the path and I really just stumbled across the Red River Hogs and I was like, oh my god, what is this? Is this Dobby from Harry Potter reincarnate in a pig? I had no idea what they were, but I just stood and watched them. I photographed them like crazy. I had so many reference images to choose from for these guys. And I did actually use my own reference for this in case you were wondering. It's also available on my website, which I'll link down below for you guys. But I just stood and just looked at these amazing little hogs. They were just snuffling. There was loads of, loads of them as well. There was about 13 maybe in one enclosure. And they were just snuffling, just going about their business, just um, finding food underneath the soil, like the one that I'm picturing here. I just wanted to encapture like that nature. That's all they just seemed to do was just snuffle under the soil, just to try and find something delicious. So that's what I wanted to capture with this, and that's why I chose this particular reference. Usually I go for like full face studies and I was thinking of going down that route but again I just wanted to go into something a little bit different. So I decided to do the whole of the hog and instead of it being like full feature on the face like maybe with the eyes open and the face sort of more prominent I just decided to depict the nature of them just snuffling because literally that is all they did when we was observing them at the zoo. This just... This drawing depicts them perfectly from what I personally saw. In terms of materials, as always, I used my trusty coloured pencils. I used just polychromos pencils for this. That's what I'm kind of leaning towards nowadays is just going full force on the polychromos. And I used my usual Fabriano Artistico paper. This portrait is actually 8x8 eight eight inches in size, so it's not a really massive portrait. I um, kind of ran out a little bit of time towards the end of June and then I realised that this needed to be doing, so I was like, mm -hmm, let's just go with a smaller piece. So that's the reason for the smaller scale on this one. But one thing I really loved about this portrait was getting to draw that wiry texture especially around the cheeks around the jaw and then coming off like little wiry tufts off the side of the hog that was just so fun to do and for that I actually used an embossing tool so that's one of my favorite things to use when trying to create like a bit of a wiry texture is just to grab an embossing tool or a white pencil something that's going to indent the paper and I put that down first before I added any color over the top so then you had like these embossed lines so that when you add the darker colors over these lines just appear and you kind of get that really wiry texture this is also a good technique to use for whiskers as well for like cats and that kind of thing but I really enjoyed creating that and the whole process of this hog was just really really simple it was a whole lot of shading there was a little bit of texture around the eyes and around the snout but that's pretty much it like most of this was just shading and blending and it was just a really simple process I really loved the colors that I picked they were just really neutral really kind of muted colors I picked out some oranges, some browns, and I also picked out some blues, which I could see going on in the ears, and there was also a little bit of green, which I added into the shadows, and a little bit of red as well, so adding a red and green together kind of cancelled each other out and produced this almost like grey tone, which was perfect for the shadow areas, like around the belly and underneath the um, chin on the legs and that kind of thing. So the colour palette that I used just worked really incredibly well together, and I was really happy with with the outcome of this in the end. I could have gone a little bit kind of more in depth with like the soil aspect and the kind of habitat aspect but 
I decided to just add a few rocks and a little bit of like soil underneath his feet and his nose so that you got the impression that he was snuffling. I could have added a whole lot more but I was running out of time to complete this and also I was just thinking about it and I didn't want to take away from the actual hog itself. I wanted to kind of make the hog the main feature because that's the whole point with this. So I just decided to add a, the tiniest little bit of the soil texture and the kind of habitat or biome underneath his feet. Um, one, because the reference photo was kind of cutting off the end of the snout and the bottom of the trotters. And two, this is quite a complicated texture to spend a lot of time over. And as I said, I didn't want to take away from the hog. I wanted to keep him in main focus. And I think it works really well with just the tiny little bit of the soil and a few rocks and things that he's standing on. I added a tiny little bit of shadow as well. I don't think it comes across that great on the video but I added a little bit of shadow underneath him as well and I think it works really well overall and I was actually really pleased with this piece in the end. One of my favourite things about this is just how serene he looks or she looks because as I later found out doing some research the males have like little kind of protrusions on the face and as I was drawing this I was calling it a he and now I realise that it's actually a female Red River Hog so she just looks so serene. It's a perfect depiction of them just snuffling away on the soil and and I just really do love this little piece. It's not like really technical or complicated. I've done a lot more complicated and technical things for the Animal Artist Collective previously. This is just a really simple one and it was really nice to work on. It was just a super quick portrait as well. This only took me three and a half hours in total, which... Um, was quite a nice time frame for this size portrait and this kind of texture as well. But I really want to know what you guys think for this theme. Do you like my choice? Do you like the depiction of the Red River Hog? What's your favourite feature about the hog as well? Mine is probably the ears just because it just really reminds me of Dobby from Harry Potter. Now, as always, this piece is available for sale and the charity I'm donating to for this piece is the Aspinall Foundation. I chose this particular one as it's actually the place where I photograph these beautiful Red River hogs and the work they do to conserve the animals and protect species is absolutely amazing. The Aspinall Foundation actually supports two zoos which are very local to me, one being Howlitz, which was where I photographed these guys, and the other being Port Lim. The Aspinall Foundation has actually released a huge amount of animals back into their natural habitats and are doing amazing things to help stop the decline of native species worldwide as well as helping UK native populations grow and also reintroducing lost species back into the UK like wolves. So make sure you check them out with the link below and learn more about the charity because it is a really good one. Make sure you give this video a big like to show your support for the AAC and if you are new here, hit that subscribe button to receive weekly arty content like this straight to your sub box. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.